Good morning. Good morning and good morning. I hope you came to celebrate today. Huh? That's all right. I'm going to have it's 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 party of one. <laughs> party of one. <laughs> Shall we stand together? Let's just celebrate the goodness of God together as family we go. I can't hear you. I can't hear the piano.
In the strength of your name, God, I will live. Jesus, you are the way, you are the way, and I will follow. You are the way, the only way, and I will follow. Whatever is true, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is life, leave me in your way everlasting, don't ever stop. Don't ever stop Whatever is true Whatever is right Whatever is pure Whatever is light Leave me in your way Everlasting Don't ever stop Don't ever stop And I don't want to live Outside your ways I don't want to miss Your heart for me You're the way Hey, hey You're the way morning we don't want him to stop leading us and guiding us and speaking into our hearts and our minds so let's take a moment and take that spiritual vitality that we've got with him and relate to each other and greet each other in the name of the Lord <laughs> okay so everything was wonderful and now I can hear it you can't either <laughs> seated we're so excited that we are here today we are so excited that you are here today and so we just want to take a, a brief moment to draw your attention to an opportunity for us to get connected 
expected and for us to, to look at what God has in store for us as we continue in our journey towards becoming a follower of Jesus Christ and becoming more Christ-like and engaging with Him through spiritual uh, relationship and then engaging to each other. We've got to get our calisthenics going. We've got to get that antenna up sometimes. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you so that I can come out here and bless my brother and my sister. And we just want to continue to celebrate His presence and His goodness at work in our lives. Hey, uh, you know, we're, we got a thing in the worship folder in the bulletin or the program, whatever we're calling it, the bulletin, uh, about an opportunity that we have to get connected on the final Sunday, the fifth Sunday this month. It's going to be called a night of worship. But we just want to get together here on a Sunday night about 5.30 or 6 and uh, bring some finger foods and just celebrate the goodness of God together. Uh, we, we just want to uh, play some songs. And one, most importantly, we would just want to spend some time together in a, in a kind of a casual way, a social way, where we can just share the goodness of God in our lives through testimonies and through prayer. So I'm looking for a prayer team. So how many people want to, or would want to be interested in, in signing up to be part of a prayer team? And, and, and I'm going to ask you to fill this card out, fill this blue card out, and just put your name and your phone number and your email address, and then put, just put PT on there somewhere. And I'll know that you want, are interested in being part of a prayer team. Now, there's there's some other things in here. Now, if you're a visitor, if you're get, if you're a guest this morning, we're so glad you're here, and we want to have an opportunity to meet you and know a little bit more about you. So, please feel free to share as much information as you're comfortable with sharing. And uh, we have a gift for you that we'd like to exchange for that, and and we'd just like to sit down and talk to you for a minute. Uh, so, if you would fill that out and put it in the offering bag when it comes around, or or give it to one of the ushers at the conclusion of the service. Uh, we just like to get to know you a little better and talk about the opportunities that we have to get uh, connected here at Florence Church of the Nazarene. So one of the things that we're going to be doing pretty soon here is having a membership class. Now, some of you have filled out the blue card already and talked about your interest in, in being a member, or uh, others have filled out the blue card and you've expressed an interest in, in baptism. And uh, I found the baptism is this wonderful thing, and I want to. I'm excited to see how that's going to work. So I'm looking forward to maybe doing some baptisms here uh, in, at the end of this month or the beginning of August, so we can have a celebration time together where and, and we can dunk some people. Was that? How's that sound? How's that sound? Because that's what that's one of the basic commands of God is that, that we are to celebrate His presence, we are to repent, we are to believe in Him, and then we're to baptize to get baptized. So it's like we get to we get to use water. So fill this blue card out, and, we'll, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to track you down, or come and see me at the conclusion of this service. If you want to be a member, or if you want to uh, go through the membership class, we're talking about doing that on July the 24th. That's two weeks from today. And then a baptism we want to talk about probably the second week of August. Second week of August, looking at that. Um, so I talked about the prayer team. I talked about the night of worship. I talked about membership and baptism. And I talked about taking the next step into being part of a connect group or a small group. And we'll probably share a little bit more about that on the night of worship, which is going to be on the last Sunday of the month. So, that being said, if the ushers would come forward, we will continue to worship and celebrate God with the giving and receiving of the tithes and the offering. Father, thank you so much for the privilege that we have of being who you are, Lord God, in, in us. And Lord, I just pray that you would... Uh, have your will and your way among us, Lord God, and that you would continue to bless us as we seek to know you more. Lord, I pray your blessing would be upon this offering, that you would uh, uh, bless the giver as well. And Lord, we just give you thanks for the opportunity that we have to be good stewards here today in worshiping you and all we say and do. And all God's people said, amen. Amen and amen. sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings, who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless with awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace, this is a failing love, that you would take my place, that you would bear my 
goodness today. <laughs> and Father, we continue to just look to you and know that you draw us closer, Lord God. Lord, I just pray that we would take these words to heart as you call us, as you draw us near, Lord. Open up our eyes, open up our hearts, open up our minds. Lord, humble us and bring us to that place where your work is accomplished, Lord. We want to be yours. We want to see you lifted high in our lives. We want to see you lifted high in our in our in our in our meeting times, Lord, in our celebration times, and in our worship, Lord God. We thank you so much for the work that you've done on our behalf through the cross, that you've brought us, you've paid the ransom, you've ransomed us, you've brought us out of bondage and set us free, Lord God. May we continue to just walk in that truth and to celebrate who you are and who we are in you. You choose the humble and raise them high. You choose the weak and make them strong. You heal our brokenness inside and give us life. The sail of the sail, the captives free. The sail of the opened eyes to see is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. The same God that spread the heavens wide. The same God that was crucified is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. You take the faithless one. And speak the words You are mine You cause the cynic and the proud Come 
God, that you paid our debt, that you ransomed us, that we might proclaim the excellencies of who you are, Lord, and who we are found in you, transformed into your likeness, Lord God. Continue to have your will and your way in us, Lord. You're calling us to the cross. I 
have incurred a large debt here at this congregation. The good news is Jesus paid it all. We are free from the debt through grace in him. There's a difficult situation going on right now as, as we stand before our Lord. And that is that Emma Crow Cal's mother is really in her last hours. So with that in mind, and Cal sitting up there serving us, bless his heart. We love you, Cal. Amen. We ask you that you bow with me in prayer. Our holy Lord, we love you and we praise you through Jesus Christ. Holy Father, thank you for sending Jesus that he paid it all. Help us, Holy Father, to realize the importance and the significance of that. And at this moment, we ask you that you be with the Crow family, that you have your hand upon Emma, that you just bless her and bless those that are with her and bless the rest of the family and take care of them give them peace give them direction and holy father i want to thank you for cal and denise for the love that they have shared with this congregation and the love and the work that they continue to share and i ask you holy father that you give cal peace in his heart and I thank you that you gave him an opportunity that for the last few weeks he has been with his mother along her side and that they had a wonderful time. As Cal puts it, Holy Father, he feels he's her favorite. <laughs> and as a parent, Holy Father, I know that all my children are favorites. So thank you, Holy Father, for making each one of us favorite in your eyes. Thank you for being with Cal and Denise and the family. Our prayer is that you give them peace and that you give them the comfort to know that she will soon be with you. We praise you, Holy Father. And Holy Father, we want to lift up Sister Lee. She's not here with us this morning because She's having a difficult morning. We ask you, Holy Father, that you take this moment with her right now and lift up her spirits. Take any burden of pain away from her. And Holy Father, let your Holy Spirit reign in her life so she may feel the glory of Jesus Christ at this present moment. And be with the family that they may continue to be strong 
and stand next to her and hold her high. We love her and we thank you, Holy Father, for making her a part of the life of this congregation and a part of the life of each individual here. We thank you. We praise you for Lee. It has been, Holy Father, a difficult week in our country. And I would like to pray that you be with the families of all those police officers that were slain in Dallas. That you just keep a hand of peace upon their families and that their families may turn to you for the answer of, of understanding. And furthermore, Holy Father, we ask you that you prick this nation to be a nation that may get on their knees and worship you and praise our Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. That we may realize, Holy Father, that the only freedom we can seek is through you. And that the only truth is through you. That you are the light, not the darkness. That you are the freedom. Help us to realize that, Holy Father. I pray for our government that they may open their hearts to you. That personal politics and personal desires may be put away. But that Jesus come to the forefront. And most of all, I pray, Holy Father, that all those that seek you in this country, all those that call themselves Christians surrender to you and we look to you for the freedom, for the knowledge, and for the truth. That we may lay our lives upon your altar and realize that you paid it all for us. Holy Father, this morning I want to thank you for this service. I want to thank you for our pastor, for Doug, for Diane for their beautiful service to us, for them bringing the joyous songs. And I ask that you continue to allow your Holy Spirit to work freely in the lives of this congregation, that we may reach out to this community and proclaim Jesus as Lord. And Holy Father, there is a church, I, I, I forget exactly the name of the town where it's in, but I know it's near Seaside, Oregon, that has just opened its doors to proclaiming your word in the last year or so. And they are in grave need of assistance. I pray, Holy Father, that through the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> we can render assistance to them that we can support their walk in Jesus. I pray, Holy Father, that your spirit take a hold of that congregation and bring it to life. Bring it to life that it may proclaim Jesus in that area and that it may glorify you. Thank you, Holy Father. And I offer this prayer through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Would you mind coming forward, or can I come to you? Or Richard, or Brother Richard will come to you. Prayer for my brother. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago, he was, his big toe was removed. not healing properly 
and they discussed amputation of the leg to just below the knee. I knew that this was going to make my brother even better, that it wasn't a bad thing, that this was good. So he arrived at the hospital Friday, and I was going to go over Saturday and be with my sister-in-law while my brother was having surgery. And the doctor went into an emergency surgery, and when he came out, he went to my brother and my sister-in-law and said, I want to try something else. I don't want to have to amputate. So they did an angiogram, they placed a stent in his leg right below the knee, and the blood flow is going perfectly. And so I say, praise God, thank you all. <laughs> So, that was spontaneous. This is spontaneous. I wrote this yesterday, and it's not spontaneous. <laughs> <laughs> the early church was filled with a dynamic sense of power and awe. That we should go about cultivating in our churches today. Doesn't that just... I don't need that opening statement anymore because the, what is happening then is happening here. And I just want to celebrate that. Uh, Acts 2, 43 says, And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And it says a little bit later on that the Lord was adding to their number day by day. We need to celebrate the, the dynamic sense of power and awe that God, that when we are awestruck with the miracle that God's working in our lives every single day, and just celebrate. That's all I got. The early church celebrated passionately in a way that created that sense of awe which impacted the believers in the first century. And the Lord was adding to their number. They, you know, it's, it's, it's like what we've been talking about. We've been celebrating the gospel. It's because we were dead in our sins and God has made us alive. And dead people can't do anything, but alive people who were dead know how to celebrate. And we need to cultivate an atmosphere of worship and celebration. There's a phrase that I like. It's called spiritual and relational vitality. Okay. So my wife proofreads this stuff for me. She's like, yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? Well, it means that we were dead and we've been brought to life through this spiritual relationship. And we have this spiritual vitality because we were dead and now we're alive. And now the relational vitality is, is that we take this relationship and we go this way. And we start meeting and, and greeting in our brother's lives and impacting in a way that Jesus has made us and equipped us to do through the life that we've received in him so that we can relate to each other and be his hands and feet, to be his prayer team, to be his prayer warriors, to be a gift back to him in order to accomplish the, 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 the equipping and the building of his church, his church. Spiritual and relational vitality is the life-giving power that faithful, pe faithful people experience together through their mutual and passionate pursuit of God's vision and purpose for their lives. Can I say that again? Spiritual and relational vitality is life-giving power that faithful, faithful people experience together through the passionate pursuit of God's vision for their lives. That's why we come to church. That's why we get together in small groups. That's why we connect with each other to the body of Christ because we are passionately in pursuit of God's vision for our lives. And our passionate pursuit of God's vision for our lives presses us to move forward and to continue celebrating that journey of growth in Jesus Christ in God by asking each other, 
What's your next step? Spiritual vitality is inspired through the indwelling Holy Spirit to press toward the goal. And the relational vitality is inspired through our day-to-day -day relationships. It's about getting connected to our brother and sister in a discipleship and an accountability format. So the question is, what is your next step? But really, it goes deeper than that. It's who is discipling you and who are you discipling? Who are you accountable to? Who have you given permission? Because we need to do that. We need to break down the walls. We need to give permission for people to come and we invite them into our lives in order that they may speak truth in a way that we might not be hearing. Who are you accountable to? Who's asking you the hard questions? Who is the person, who is the one person in your life that you have given permission to, to, to poke holes in your vision of reality? You know, I had the opportunity this week to go to Ashland. Diane and I went down Thursday to, uh, the district has assigned me a mentor. And he, he's the pastor of the Ashland Church down there. So I had not met with him since, well, we came here on February 21st to interview. And my first meeting with him was February the 25th. And I haven't had a chance to meet with him since. So I've gone February, March, April, May, June, almost seven months without a chance to meet with that and, and cultivate that relationship uh, through the transitional process and the things that we've done. Now, I've got a, another mentor who was mentoring me through my last few days in college as part of my class, and that's the pastor down at Brookings. And I continued that relationship with him up through the mi about the middle of last month. And then, and then we kind of had that, that, you know, it's time to move away. <laughs> We, we, we had our time together, and God has brought us through that. And, and so it's like, it's time for me to get back with, with uh, Pastor Jim down in Ashland. And so it was a great time. We went down there, uh, uh, got to eat an In-N-Out burger. Uh, actually, when you talk about passion, boo. <laughs> but okay, so this is a confession. I ate four of them. Yeah, because Diana had three. <laughs> <laughs> And we, we got, you know, you get, you, you, we got a box. Okay, now it wasn't all at once. <laughs> They're small. It was, I wasn't a double. I didn't do the double. It was a small one. It was a small one. My daughter posted on Facebook. You met my daughter a couple of weeks ago. She was here. She posted on Facebook and said, my dad taught me that it's okay to eat cheeseburgers that have been left in the car overnight the next morning for breakfast. <laughs> the next morning for breakfast, it's okay to eat a cheeseburger that's been in the car. Well, we lived in Arizona, so it was hot. <laughs> Anyhow. Who is discipling you, and who are you discipling? Who have you given permission to poke holes in your reality? Who, who are you teaching how to eat cheeseburgers? <laughs> Anyhow, I'm sorry. In the, in the opening uh, statement of the manual of the Church of the Nazarene, it tells us that our mission of the Church of the Nazarene is to make Christ-like Christ disciples in, in the nation. The, the primary objective of the Church of the Nazarene is to advance God's kingdom as it is set forth in the scriptures. And one of the biblical objectives, some of the biblical objectives that we have identified from the scriptures are the, the need for holy Christian fellowship. We need that connection to, with holy Christian fellowship. We need, in order to speak into people's lives, in order to impact them with the gospel, so that we might see the conversion of sinners. And, 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 and the entire sanctification of believers. Now that's a, a fancy term for holiness or Christ-likeness. Uh, sanctification means that we become Christ-like. What it really boils down to is that we know how to love God and we know how to love each other. Amen? Amen? And we do that through, uh, 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 through, the, through the upbuilding and working through in our relationships in holiness. Uh, and that is the simple spiritual power that was manifest in the primitive uh, early first century church uh, together with them preaching the gospel to every creature the church of the Nazarene exists to serve as an instrument for advancing the kingdom of God through preaching and teaching of the gospel throughout the world our well defined commission is to preserve uh, Christian holiness as it is set forth in the scriptures through the conversion of sinners, the reclamation of backsliders and the entire sanctification of all of us as believers our objective is a spiritual one, namely to evangelize in response to the Great Commission as given in Matthew 28, uh, verse 19. Go and make disciples of all 
nations. We believe that this aim can be realized through agreed-upon policies and procedures, including the doctrinal tenets of faith and the time-tested standards of right living, morality, and lifestyle, living, living rightly, living the holy life, living the Christ-like life. Uh, we have a, an agreed-upon set of policies and procedures. I'm looking for a word. It's called, uh, uh, it's going to slip my tongue. We see this not only as an opportunity for participation and service in the church, but also as an obligation for all of us, both laity and ministry. Now, laity means it's for the common man, for all of us, all of us. For you, it's for you, it's for me. It's not just for ministers. It's not just for Sunday school teachers. It's for every believer in Christ. We are all ministers for Christ. So when we have an agreed upon set of, of principles and standards to follow, I'm still looking for that word. It's one of those buzzwords. Systems and structures, that's it. <laughs> systems and structures. When we have some very repeatable and knowable systems and structures, when you come to church and it's laid out for you, you know what, 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 what is expected, you know what you need to do, you know that this is how you react in this situation and this is how you want to... This is what God is leading you to do. When you know what God is leading you to do and, and you are obedient in that process, that is how we advance the kingdom of the gospel. Does that, does that make sense? Systems and structures. Having systems and structures that are memorable and repeatable, we know what to do. What's your church all about? Well, we have a discipleship process. We have First, you've got to get saved, and then you've got to engage into a relationship, a discipleship relationship, so that you can have somebody who's helping you walk through that process together. And that's what the whole thing about this body of believers is about. It's about discipleship. And it starts with celebrating our loving and loving obedience uh, to what we have determined as Jesus' basic commands. We've already talked about one. It's love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. And then he calls us and he conforms us to, to disciple others, to reach out into other people's lives. Um, that means holy Christian fellowship means it's not just amongst the believers because when we do that, we don't have sinners being committed or converted. It's the conversion of sinners. So we have to have those relationships outside of the church, and that's important. The first basic command of Christ is to repent. And we talk, I spent the last couple of weeks talking about repentance. And, uh, and just a quick review, repentance goes deeper than an intellectual decision. It is a permanent change that can only be wrought out through the presence of God. We cannot know God's redeeming grace anywhere apart from Christ. We just can't do it. We're not equipped to do it. We can't do it on our own. In his opening remarks, Paul shares something beautiful with the church in Ephesus, in his opening remarks in, in, the, in the book of Ephesians. In Ephesians 1, he lists the benefits of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What he does is he lists, Paul lists the blessings that flow out of the grace of God. We were just singing about that. Jesus paid it all. And these are things that we can celebrate today in the present. In the present. He says in Ephesians 1, I'm going to read verses 7 through 14. In him... We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and on earth, in him, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed 
with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. To the praise of His glory. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in John 10.10, I came that you might have life and that you might have it abundantly. Now somehow I got abundant life mixed into abundant joy <laughs> because that's what life is. It's the joy. The joy of, of every created thing is to do what it was created to do. That is the expression of joy. A blade of grass pushes itself up through the soil. There's a struggle there, isn't there? It pushes itself up through the soil and it, and it bursts into uh, the sun and it, and it lives. That's it's just... Yes. Yes, that's all I mean. It says in... Uh, it says He lavished upon us. He showered us profusely. He showers us profusely. And we can celebrate the lavishness of God's grace. And he gives us two gifts. Two gifts. He says wisdom and insight. These are two gifts that are, are that are that we receive out of his lavish, profuse showering of abundance upon us. It's 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 uh, God's giving is not merely out of his riches, but it is according to his measure, which is without measure. Uh, uh, wisdom is equals knowledge which sees the heart of things as they truly are. Insight is like prudence. It's an understanding or a discernment that always leads us to do the right thing. It leads us to do the right thing. Um, William Barclay says, Christ gives men the ability to see the great truth of eternity. That's wisdom. And he gives us the ability to solve the problems of each moment in time. That's insight. That's prudence. The gospel leads us into the way of salvation. It's a process. It points us toward the purpose that we have for the salvation that we have in him. And the purpose is the process, and the process is the purpose. in order that we might be to the praise of His glory. Through Christ, He continuously and graciously equips us for the task. There's one uh, scripture that I have to add to this. It's dropped down from verse, verse uh, 14 to verse 18. It says, Having the eyes, this is Ephesians 1.18, Having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which He has called you, what are the riches of of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And it's hard to stop there, but we need to celebrate that because our eyes have been opened. Our eyes have been opened that we may know the hope that which he has called us and the riches of his glorious inheritance that we have. I might have this later on in my notes, but I'm not looking at them so I can jump ahead. Even a fool knows what to do with an inheritance. That, that, that includes me. <laughs> that includes me. I know what to do with a gift. It has to be opened. It has to be received. It, it, some of us aren't very good at receiving. We have to receive it. And inheritance is something of great worth. And we'd be fools not to get, at, get after it and go get it. Um, Jesus uh, points this out to the, the Samaritan woman at, the, at Jacob's well in John chapter 4. She, he says, uh, the Father is seeking worshipers. He said, but the hour is coming and is now here. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. Worshiping Him in spirit and in truth is, is how we relate in that inheritance. And it's how we celebrate our obedience to what Jesus has commanded us to do. Here's, here's a bullet point. I don't, we're working on our PowerPoint. We're working on our technology. And Joe, thank you. You're just wonderful up there. And I appreciate you so much, Cal and Steve up there. Uh, thank you so much for your heart and your service. Uh, and I don't know if we got this bullet point into the, to the PowerPoint up there, but here it is. True worshipers fear nothing but sin. 
and desire nothing but the glory of God. And they find their joy continuously practicing the presence of God and continuously praising Him in adoration and thanksgiving. I keep thinking about that, practicing and celebrating uh, the, the presence of God. And it's like, you remember Easter? I wasn't here then, but I saw the service. And Pastor Bob was here, and he was talking about the resurrection of Jesus. And he was like, practice the resurrection. I was like, yeah, that's what we need. That's what we need to do. Practice the resurrection. That means his life in me. I was dead. Now I'm alive. That's the gospel. Amen. Amen. A worshiper who fears nothing but sin and desires nothing but God will shake the gates of hell as they proclaim God's kingdom here and now on earth. And in the book of Acts, we see evidence of this. The early church practiced this in in their importance of, of, of biblical worship. In Acts 13, in Acts 13, I don't need to open it up. I know what it says. Acts 13, verse 1. There was a bunch of leaders, and they were in, in, uh, in the church. And I'm going to skip all the names there. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, they were ministering to, the God, to God. The Holy Spirit spoke to them. They were celebrating. They were worshiping. They were worshiping in spirit, and they were worshiping in truth. They were worshiping in the vibrancy, the spiritual vitality, and the relational vitality with each other. And the Holy Spirit speaks, and he says, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul... For the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and they sent them off. But do you know where they went? That was Paul's first missionary journey. And they changed the world. They changed the world. He planted all the, he planted all the churches. That, and, he, and, he, and it would later on lead to the fact that he would write all those letters that have make up the majority of the New Testament. The letters to the Ephesians, the letters to the Colossians, the Galatians, the Thessalonians. Because they were practicing the presence of God. They were worshiping and fasting. This established a pattern of worship that shook the gates of hell as those worshipers continued to collaborate with the Holy Spirit and they built God's church in the first century. When we practice the presence of God, we celebrate the presence of God through spiritual and relational vitality. Because God is continuing to do wonderful things in people's lives today. We just heard a wonderful testimony. He is moving. He never stops moving. We thank him and we tell others about what he is doing. If we do not, we rob God of the praise that he is due. And not only do we rob him, we rob ourselves and we rob others the thrill of connecting with God and what he is actively doing. Celebration, celebrating God is the participation in the activity of his coming kingdom and his moving kingdom and his kingdom today. It's here, it's present. And celebration is important because we become what we celebrate. Scott Wilson wrote uh, uh, Steering Through the Chaos. It's one of the, one of the wonderful books that I'm struggling through right now. And he says this quote, at its, heart, celebration, ce- at its heart, celebration focused primarily on the work of God in people's lives. At its heart, Celebration focused primarily on the work of God in people's lives. That's why we need to celebrate. But another essential part of celebration is affirming one another. We need to celebrate who we are, and we need to celebrate our love for each other. When we build up and bless each other, uh, we build up and bless each other when we communicate the message of, I love you. I'm proud of you. You're really good at this. You're really terrific at that. And I can see a great future in God's kingdom for you. We build each other up. These messages thrill our souls when we hear them because they build trust and they build love when we speak them as, as, as into the lives of others. Celebrating God's character and power has a transformational impact on us as it reinforces his call and his claim on us as his children. Our celebration rivets our hearts on his character. And our celebration reminds us that he is Lord, he is sovereign, and it, and it, so it focuses on, it reminds us of his goodness, and it strengthens our faith. It's our faith muscle. And as Christians, we must take the lead in giving thanks and praise. Otherwise, people will begin to assume that it's not 
very important. We prayed for our nation, that our nation would turn back to God, that our nation would repent. Well, as Christians, we are responsible for leading the way. We were responsible. Christians must take the lead in giving thanks and praise. Otherwise, others will assume that it's just not that important. Our commitment to celebrate reinforces our priorities that we can trust God even more because we believe and we know that God has done it once and he will do it again. And that is why it is so important for me as his follower to, to, to focus on that next step and to see where and how we can celebrate the presence of God. So I'm going to do something a little different. In your worship folder somewhere, there's a half sheet. You want to take that out. On one side is a, is a place for notes. And maybe you've had an opportunity to, to, to notice that and, and take an advantage of that. But on another, the other side is, is a practical exercise. And I'd like us to go through that and do that together right now, if we could. There are six questions on that half sheet that stimulate conversation that help us in our growth towards discipleship. We did this uh, at the men's breakfast a couple of weeks ago. And I don't want to do the whole thing. It took us about 10 minutes. And we just broke into groups, one-on-one -on -one groups. Maybe one-on-three here. Maybe one-on-three. But you're, you don't have to move. But just turn to the person that you're sitting next to. And, and we'll just take a couple of minutes. I really want to focus on, it's important to know in your relationship, if you were meeting week to week, to ask, how are you doing? How are things going? Because we want to be connected in that way. But the focus that I want to talk, look at today is three things. The number two question, what are you celebrating? It's, it's, it says in there, that's probably the second most important question because it helps us identify the areas that, uh, the second, I dropped, I missed one, I missed one. This, it's the second question which starts the meeting off on the positive note and it helps us focus on God's faithfulness through praise and thanksgiving. Every one of us as followers of Jesus Christ should have something that we are celebrating. And if we're struggling with that, we can look back in our lives and find something that we can celebrate that God did that brought us to a new place. So th that's the first question. The second question is, what challenges are you facing? And this is the second most important question because it helps us identify the areas where I'm just a little bit stuck and I need a little bit of help. And by confessing that, I'm allowing God to illuminate or show me with wisdom and insight how I might be able to do that. And by relating with my brother or my sister, I'm inviting that opportunity to be accountable and for maybe us to, to support each other. The uh, scripture says there in uh, 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 Galatians 6 uh, that we are to bear each other's burdens. We are bear, to bear each other's burdens. And the, and, the, and the last question would be, how can I pray for you? This is a discipleship relationship that we have a commitment. It's like, by saying, how can I pray for you? That means we're going to get together next week or we're going to get together some other time. And I'm going to pray for you in the, in the time that we're apart. And I know you're going to pray for me. And we are going to develop this relationship, which is basically mentoring or coaching or what we've been called to do to make disciples. So if you would just, I know this might be uncomfortable, but bear, bear, bear with us, bear with us here. Just turn to that person next to you and just spend a minute, a minute, talking about something that you might be celebrating. That's, that's 30 seconds apiece, 30 seconds apiece. So I didn't put a timer up or nothing like that, but ready, go. What are you celebrating? What are you celebrating?
Okay, that's been about a minute. Thank you for participating up to this point this far. Now, let's go to the next question. It's like, what challenges are you facing today? What challenges are you facing today? 30 seconds each. Ready? Go. I got a timer now. Okay, now you probably already know the last question here. It's like, you probably already have the answer to this because we just talked about what you're celebrating and what you're challenging. So it's like, we always want to praise God. We always want to give Him thanks. We'll talk a little bit more about that next week. But it's like, how can I pray for you this week? This could be reciprocated because how can I pray for you can turn into how can you pray. This, here's how you can pray for me. Here's what I'm struggling with. So it, it just, And it ties us together. And it, and, it, and it belies a commitment that we are going to talk about this again in the near future. Ready? Go. Shall we stand together? I hope that wasn't too awkward. But but sometimes it takes a little bit of a nudge to get us out of that comfort zone and to get us across this. I remember one of the challenges that we faced uh, from in, in one of the, it's like, do you know what the color of your neighbor's kitchen is on the wall? It's like, okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe that's a, that maybe that's a challenge for a later date. <laughs> so it's like, how well do we know our neighbors? How well do I know our neighbors? Father, thank you for the privilege of being in your house today. Father, thank you for the privilege of of the inspirational uh, presence that draws us out of death and into life. Lord, I pray that we would continue to be cultivators or nurturers of that vitality that is so uh, critical in developing that sense of awe and passion that brings us out of darkness and into light. Lord, that we would continue just to celebrate your presence in our lives and that we would share and that we would break down the walls that hinder and keep us from, from sharing and developing intimate relationships with, with the people that matter most to us. Lord, I pray that you would continue to just inspire and, and lead us, to give us wisdom and insight in developing uh, the systems and structures that we need to have in place here so that it can be clear when people come through the door, this is a place where Jesus Christ is worshipped, where God is glorified, and where lives are encountering the risen Savior and being transformed into his likeness every single day. Father, have your will. Start with me. Have your will in your way. And we give you all the thanks, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's sing this wonderful, wonderful song from him, uh, from Psalm 103.
Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when we evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, Worship His holy name. We'll sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. day when we know we are headed into his presence for all eternity. You know, I was, can I share something in the middle of this? Just real brief, real brief. We, we were in Brookings for a long time and we kind of knew that God was moving and stirring things here. And so it was about in October when, when we found it in our hearts to just come up and, 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 and sit in the parking lot. And we did it on October the 17th. <laughs> I remember the day that we came in and we sat out wherever it is. <laughs> I'll find it. <laughs> we sat out there and we just like, Lord, not your will, but my will be done. And it was what we had an opportunity to do that because we were on our way to Portland to to see uh, to see uh, Matt Redman and, and 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 go to a worship concert that was up there. And so we stopped in here and, and we prayed and we said, Lord, your will, speak to our hearts, let your work be done. And, and we'll submit to the process, and here we are, because we, we were obedient in that. But there was something that happened at that concert. Matt was telling this story about how they wrote this song, and it's like it was 1.30 in the morning, it was late at night, and, and, uh, and he was tired, and he wanted to go home, and it's like, I just didn't feel like working anymore. I didn't feel like this anymore. And, and it's like, and Jonas Myron, the co-writer of the song, says, no, 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 we're going to, and, and it's, just, it's just turned into one of the most popular hymns in the church today. But an even greater thing that happened after that, there's, there was like a testimony of a, of a young man who had gone through uh, a very traumatic uh, brain surgery. It was very revolutionary in the fact that he was awake through the process. And they were working, they had his, his skull open, and they were working in there, and they wanted, to, 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 they wanted him to speak as part of the surgery. And he didn't just speak. He sang these words. And on that day, when my strength is failing, the end draws near, and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise on in thee. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Sing it out. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Jesus, I will worship. 
worship your holy name. Lord, I'll worship your holy name. Just celebrate with praise and thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for your goodness, for your continued work in our lives. Lord, bring us back together quickly. We give you thanks and praise. Amen. You are dismissed. Thank you. Take a moment and talk to somebody you might not know very well.